let me share something with you. You guys got this? Yes. Okay, this is me. I'm the hairdresser. These are my hands. <laughs> so listen, from this, from me, training you here, learn your foundations. All we use on the runways is on base, off base, um, S, um, the curls, six and eights. All that stuff is what we use on the runway. It's the base and the foundation of everything. If you think you're beyond that, you're never going to make it in business. Because what's the curling? How you curl? Propanol and. The Marcel? Is that what? Okay, so from this, from me actually learning my craft and being amazing in it in school, what happened is it branched off and I got what? Right? So, anyways, from there, um, I got more clients, but they were up and coming, but they became celebs, right? From the celebs, I got more clients, and then they it built relationships. Okay, from there, I got more clients, and then now I got manufacturers. Well, that's going to be under here and here. Okay, from there, not only that, I built, I actually built bridges. Okay, I'm just going to keep this under the wraps. All right. This is what everything, these are all clients. Right? You guys get that? Okay, so now check this out. From here, my clients have opened so many doors because of the relationships I built that it turned into celebrities, that it through manufacturers, and all this is is they're it's sort of building bridges everywhere across that. Does that make sense? So it started with a haircut. Then from the haircut I needed to advance, then I started doing highlights. Kept it very simple, you know, and then from highlights, they got older, turned gray, touched them up. And then now I had three clients in one. You don't need a million clients. You guys get that? You need one, you need 12, actually. Jesus did it with 12. You know what I'm saying? He touched 12 people's lives, gave them their world, and they went out in twos and changed it. It's the same model for any business marketing with anybody. It's the base. It's got to be word of mouth. And how do you get word of mouth? You got to start doing stars today. Right? Let me give you some background. Okay. Um, I used to be in the gangs. I grew up in a crip gang, actually. And obviously I'm not black, so I was being tested every single day. I had to prove myself. And I'm little, so. <laughs> so anyways, so I had to be I had to be stronger, I had to be bigger, I had to be on, on a whim to actually execute. I'm not talking people, I'm just talking about me, right? So as I as I came up in my, my ranks, I became one of the biggest drug dealers in LA and it was crazy. Anyways, um I got caught. Uh, I was looking at five to seven years because I was transporting drugs. <coughs> And what happened was for three years, when I was 17, 18, 19, I was fully gray because I was living the life and then all of a sudden, five to seven years, I was pretty stressed. All right, this is, I'm giving you foundation now, okay? So what happened was when, when I started stressing about like this whole five years thing, I walked into a church and I said, hey God, use me, take my life. Do whatever you gotta do it, because at this point I'm in trouble. Please, <laughs> please, you know what I mean. So I, I I just surrendered to to my purpose. You can look amazing, you can be very cool, you can be beautiful, you can have a lot of money, but without purpose you're really nothing. Get that? So I I needed a purpose. I knew I had a lot of qualities. I was great with my hands. Super street smart, you know, I wouldn't have rose up in the ranks on the streets if I wasn't. So I knew I had something to offer, right? But I didn't have a purpose. So when I got caught up, when I actually gave my life to surrender, you got to think, 
you know, I, I don't know how I came across the church thing. It was so weird because I read the scripture that said, you know, um, there's no greater love than a friend who laid down his life for another. I was like, I got that in the gang world. You know what I mean? Like, why would I even start going to church? You know? Right? So anyways, you know, I, I leave the whole thing for a second, go back into the hood, and there was this big shooting where everybody ran, and I was the one left. So I jumped over this fence, this guy drove over the fence, almost killed me, you know what I mean? He, he was standing over me with a gun like this, looking for people, and I was just laying right there, just thinking, dang, I'll get me through this, and I'll go back to church tomorrow. <laughs> right? So you know what I'm saying? So anyways, he didn't kill me. Obviously, I'm here, you know, and I, I, at that moment, I totally surrendered, like, for real, for real. Like, you know, I was like, all right. I'm not going to play around, I'm not going to go half ass. you know, I'm, I'm going for real this time. So at that point where I surrendered, I had this piece that said, you know what, all right, I'm going to use you. So when I went into court, after three years, about to get sentenced, the Saturday before I was going to school on Monday, and I was getting sentenced on Thursday, you guys get that? I, I was actually asking around all these salons to sponsor me you know, to get into school, because I wanted to do it legit, and I wanted to do it based on if this was my call, it was a test. So all these salon people were just giving me money to pay my tuition, and I happened to sit down with this lady who was a lawyer, I mean, who was a, you know, she did a lot of lawyers in the salon. So I told her my whole testimony, <laughs> and it's gang bang, it was ruthless, no, 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 and she's like, well, I know a lot of lawyers, you know, where are you getting tried at? And I told her where I was getting tried, she's like, I know everybody there just happened to be and then so so I start telling her she's like tell me some names and maybe I can pull some strings for you I was like I'm already getting sentenced on Thursday so at this point I don't think you can pull any strings ding 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 so she says well who do you know I was like well my lawyer I'm already paying him so if you can pay him some more and maybe he can get me out but that's not the case she didn't know my judge because I was already in appeals court we're talking <coughs> three years I'm already in appeals court above superior court she didn't know anybody up there She's like, well, what about your DA, the guy that's prosecuting you? He's like, oh, man, his name is um, something Poling. He's this racist guy, cowboy hat. He's trying to make an example of him. She's like, Poling? Look at my, my, here's my card. And her name was so-and-so Poling. Uh, she was like, that's my husband. She was like, that is my husband. And I was like, what? So anyways, I freaked out for a second because I just told her everything that he's been trying to get out of me. Right? So we're literally, I'm literally, I just incarcerated myself. You know what I'm saying? But she said, you know what, let me tell you something. We're believers and this is why, this is his purpose. Change the world. I'm going to have to pray about telling him this because he can put you away with everything you just told me. Oh my God, like what else can happen, right? right. So literally, that Monday I started school, and that was Saturday. That Monday I started school, I came to school, and that at the time we had to come with white smocks. I don't know what you guys wore today. Black t shirts Shirt. Okay, we had white smocks, buttoned down, you know, I had my name put right here. I was all old school barberish. Citrus. So I didn't go to no Palmetto, but I asked soon I went to Citrus. Okay? So listen, this is key now. I went, and in that, on that Monday when I started school, I was so into this hair thing, I totally forgot about everything else around me. I totally forgot about everything around me, whether I was a brother, a father, a gangbanger, a going to court, up for jail, didn't have no money. I forgot about it. And when I was in school, I was, I mean, rainbows coming out of my ass, right? <laughs> All right, so listen, just to give you perspective, Thursday rolls around, and instead of going to my sentencing, I, I was at school. And my mom calls me up and says, where are you? You're supposed to be getting sentenced. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so into this hair thing, I totally forgot. The biggest thing I've been living for the last three years, every single day, I totally forgot about. So I got in my car, Citrus, and then Rancho Cucamonga is where I was getting tried. I jumped in my car, I made it there, like, it usually takes about 45 minutes. I made it there in like 20 minutes, 19 minutes to be exact. Walked in, they were, they were pulling my file already, and this, this DA walks up and he starts putting all this evidence of new, new evidence to add to the case. What they were with character references, 
they were all these letters of like, oh my god, this kid's amazing. <coughs> I don't know where he got them from, but he pulled strings from everybody that I was involved with, from youth camps to prisons to wherever I was speaking. And literally he said, I'm going to withdraw my plea of five to seven years and I'm, and I'm going to do the, uh, I'll give him three years probation. I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to be the best hairdresser in the world, right? In that moment, I had a, I had a second chance. Remember what I had up here, choice versus circumstance? Right now, you guys have a choice to do amazing things with your life because there is no circumstance. But that's why I asked you, is your mom telling you to do this? Are you doing this just to get by? Because if you are doing it just to get by, do yourself a favor and find what you love because you'll, you'll rise up so much faster because you love it than trying to just occupy your time. Do you, understand, do you understand what I'm saying? Because this this career is so hard to make it without love, without purpose, that you're literally, you're gonna be wasting your time. Wasting our time, wasting, you know, it's just find what you love and do it. Stop playing, you know what I mean? And when when I actually came into, this, came into the, the real world, I started doing hair like, and just lost it. It's not how interesting you are. It's how interest, I mean, how interesting you look, it's how interested you are. You know, I don't have a mohawk, I don't have blonde tips and, you know, all that because I want to cross over, I want to do everybody's hair. I want to appeal to people with money, I want to appeal to white, black, orange, I want to go to Japan, I want to, I want to go back to Brazil, I want to, I want to do Fashion Week in India. And if you're all these things, you're not a universal tool anymore. Do you guys get that? Yeah. So the more creative you look, the less creative you can be. I'm just saying. You can be amazingly creative, but again, you know, like I said, not everybody's going to accept you in, the, in your world. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You have earrings all over your face. I mean, you think Armani's going to want you on his runway? I'm just saying. And I'm not, I'm not saying compromise you. Let the creative be here. Not just all over here. You get it? Okay, so so long story short, he gives me probation. Um, I start doing hair, start doing all these these young up and coming actors, celebrities, models, whatever, and now they're all doing something big in the you know. It, it's just amazing. 